Someone praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a great privilege to be here this morning. And I'd like to appreciate our God, the Almighty, for granting us the grace to be counted among the living. I'm sure many would have wished to be here this morning, but the grace is not there. We thank God. Let's clap for Jesus. Our God is a good God. Let's clap for him. Let's thank him. He's been good to us. Some of us were here last year. And so this year again, his grace has brought us. And so we return all the glory to our maker in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to say a big thank you to God Almighty. I'd like to say thank you to Daddy and Mommy Gio. And especially to our host, our beloved Daddy in the province and our charming Mommy in Lagos province, 47, Pastor Femi and Pastor Morning. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's celebrate God in their lives. They've been a, we, we look up to them. We can celebrate them. We know we have daddy and mom in the house that are worthy of his calling. And I pray this morning that the oil will never run over your head in the name of Jesus. That the assignment the Lord had given unto you in this province, you will not fall, you will not fail, you will not falter. And help us of destiny the Lord will release unto you in the name of Jesus. And I want to thank God for my co-laborers. Praise the Lord. Women in the house shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. We will not be weary on this journey in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because without us, our parishes cannot run. So let's celebrate ourselves. And how do the children clap for themselves? They do like this. To yourselves, praise the Lord. Without you, our parishes cannot run. The men are trying, but without the women, you know the things cannot run. So we, we give God the glory. We thank God for the place that he has put us. So celebrate yourselves. Praise the Lord. Celebrate yourselves. And women, please, um, life is very short. Life is very short. Please don't take anything for granted. Check your health. Your health status. Know your health status. Know where you are. Uh, as we are taking care of the men, the children, everybody, mommy, 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 daddy will say mommy, children will say mommy, 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 please find time to, to, to be yourself, to love yourselves, praise the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. God forbid anything happens to our enemies. So please, it's very important. And um, I thank God for the privilege to be on this altar this morning. And the topic they've given me is the right heart. Praise the Lord, the right heart. The Lord will surely give us right heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. And our text is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, I take the New Living Translation. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. The hearts of the wise lead them to do right, and the hearts of the foolish lead them to do evil. And the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. What is it about the heart? What is it about the heart? This thing that we call the heart. The heart is the seat of emotions. Praise the Lord. It is from the heart good things come from. It's from the heart evil thoughts come from. The heart is the core of who you are. Praise the Lord. All of us are seated here now. Something is going on in our hearts. And the Bible has reminded us that where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Some are thinking of their businesses, multimillionaire businesses right now. Some are thinking of their husbands, some are thinking of their children. Our heart is very important. And some in their hearts, they are abusing some people. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In their hearts, they are abusing some people. Mm, look at his head. Look at his leg. Look at the dress. Look at this heart. Is, is, uh, <laughs> God will have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. It is from the hearts that evil thoughts come from. It's from the hearts that fornication adultery, all kinds of things, stealing, cheating. It's from the heart that it comes from. And once somebody cannot use, you cannot commit fornication in one day. It can, it's not possible. It will have started from somewhere. One man is telling you, I love you. I, you know, even if he has a wife at home, he's telling you you are the most beautiful thing that happened to him on surface earth. <laughs> Wicked heart. Praise the Lord. It is from the heart that murders take place. People are planning to murder somebody. They will have planned it. It's from the heart. It's this heart 
the Lord will give us the right heart in the name of Jesus. As we talk about the right heart, we need to look at what is in the wrong heart. Praise the Lord. And one part of the Bible that I fear very most, one dangerous Bible passage that I fear most, I want, to, I want us to look at it. When I read this um, Bible passage, I'm so afraid. It's Psalm 14. Psalm 14, verse 1. Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. From the heart. It's from the heart. It is God that sees the heart. When that man woke up in the morning and uh, he said there is no God. His neighbor, people standing left on his left, on his right, they did not know what he was thinking. He said there is no God. It was that heart. And sometimes in our hearts, let's be careful what we think. Sometimes you say, ah, in your heart, I say, I wish uh, somebody gives me shawarma. And before you know it, it happens. How many people have experienced that in the past? You wish for something and it comes. So that means that heart, God is in it. God knows about it. God is at work because we are created in the image of God. And he has given us a heart. And so our hearts should align with the heart of God. And that's how God can communicate with us. And so God desires that we have a good heart. So when you have a heart that is not right with God, God is not pleased with us. So let us think of, in our hearts, let's cultivate that habit. I'm talking to myself. Let's cultivate the habit of thinking good thoughts. Let's live. When Satan wants to bring evil, evil thoughts will come. All right. That's the work of Satan. But you can, you know how you, if you have to say a word of prayer, worship. Somebody told us, we had it in the past, that uh, birds can, you know, they can fly all over the place. But if they want to perch on your head, what do you do? Is you who drive it away. So those are, that's where thoughts come into the heart. If the heart is thinking evil, that means it's like a bird perching on your head. What do you do? Would you continue to allow the bird to sit there? Or you say, get it behind me, Satan. Praise the Lord. And one thing that we need to do about our hearts is, let, let's look at the book of Proverbs. What does it tell us? What to do with this heart? What do we do with our hearts? Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. 23. Proverbs 1, 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The New Living Translation says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it affects everything you do. Guard your heart. It's from your heart that you say, This man self, I tire. This man is, 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 well, is too much. This man, uh, let me call a lawyer. I want a divorce now. Is from the heart. It's not one day, one day I want to have it. No, 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 no. It's from the heart. It's from the heart that you begin to scheme evil thoughts, plot evil, plot. And from the heart, so many things. That's why the Bible is reminding us, guard it jealously. Don't allow any evil thing to come into it. Let's have a right heart. Praise the Lord. Before we look at the right heart, what can go wrong with the wrong heart? The heart that does not align with the Spirit of God is full of evil. Like I said earlier, an evil heart is full of evil thoughts. And that's what happened in Genesis. Let's look at what God said in Genesis, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Genesis 6, 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6, it says, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God was grieved. Because so this is the people that I've created, I've put my heart in them. And so why are they like this? Praise the Lord. He says, why are they like this? He says, I better destroy the whole world. I better destroy the whole world. And when you begin to look at what, what happens in the heart, what goes on in the heart, what are the thoughts in the heart, Let's look at what happens in the heart. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. When the heart goes to work, what are the manifestations? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, 
fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they will do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Genesis 6, 6, 8 says, But Noah found grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. After the Lord, after the flood, Noah made a sacrifice. Noah made a sacrifice. And Genesis 8, 21, God changed his heart. He says, I'm not going to destroy human beings. I'm not going to destroy the world again. He knew in his heart that man is evil from childhood. God knew that man needed a new heart if he was to have a right heart. God knew that man needed a new heart. And so what was his promise? What was God's promise? We can see that in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. It says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Praise the Lord. Even as God offered a new heart, not everyone is ready to embrace it, except those who have surrendered their lives to Jesus. And Second Corinthians 5, 13 says, if, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Once you receive a new heart, a right heart and a spirit is what we are going to begin to experience. So as we experience a right heart, we see brokenness. We see humility. We see abhorrence from all kinds of evil thoughts and ways. You see new thoughts begin to come. New spirits. You see a life of holiness. A life of godliness. And what begins to manifest. What do we experience? What do we see? We see it begins to manifest in the book of what we see in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any, any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Let's keep reminding ourselves how the state, our state of heart should be. Praise the Lord. And in conclusion, I want us this morning to make up our minds to develop the right heart. And how do we do it? We need to cry unto God. We need to cry unto God just like David did in Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, does it tell us? Psalm 51. The Psalm of David. It says, Psalm 51, verse 10, it says, Create in me a new heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So this morning we are going to ask God to create in us a new heart. A heart that God needs to transform. A heart that, just like our sister said, when you look at your sister, it's not about condemnation, it's not about judging from your heart. If you have a good heart, no matter what your sister is going through, you know that, yes, your heart reaches out to him, to her. Your heart reaches out to your neighbor. Praise the Lord. Once God knows our desire, God knows how our heart desires. He knows. He knows that the genuineness of our hearts and he will grant us our heart desires. Psalm 37 verse 4, Psalm 37 verse 4, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. As we progress during this female minister's conference, let's ask God for a right heart. And he will do that work of transformation in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Let's say, Father, thank you. Thank you for this privilege to be in this conference. Thank you, my Father. You've been a good God unto me. Last year I was at the conference and here I am this year. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, say, Father, I ask for your surgery in my heart. Do that surgery, Lord, today. Do that surgery in my heart. I need a right heart, a right heart. The heart of God, Father, do it, O oh Lord. Do it, O oh Lord. How you will do it, I do not know. 
but I know you can do that work of transformation. You know that you can do that surgery today. Do it, my father. Give me a right heart. Give me a right heart, a pure heart. Remove the stony heart. Give me the heart of flesh to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Say, Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, my heart, make my heart faithful and pure. Make my heart faithful and pure. And keep me in right standing till I see you in glory. Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, make my heart faithful and pure. Keep me in right standing till I see you in glory. Thank you, my Father. Lord Jehovah, this is our heart cry this morning, O oh Lord. Give us a pure heart. Give us a heart, O oh Lord Jehovah, that pants after you. And Lord, at the end of age, please count us worthy. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Someone shout a big hallelujah. Amen. Amen.